All right, so welcome back. Uh, remember, this is Lab 7, the law of conservation of energy. So the setup is over here. What you're going to be using is one of these Dynamics carts. They got really low friction wheels, uh, small wheels, and you attach, this is called a picket fence. We're just going to use this flag right here. And we're going to use a photo gate, which is all hooked up right here, and it's going to measure the speed of the car. And the distance of this flag is 2.5 centimeters. Now on the photo gate itself, there's a screw on the side so you can adjust it up and down so that you're just scanning the smallest flag. Now I'll do that in a minute, but I just want you to know that it's got that right there. But anyway, it's photo gate again. We've used that the last couple labs. And this device right here is called a spring cart launcher. All right, it attaches right to the cart. There's two screw holes right here. And then you put this, this spring on here. Now we have three different kinds of springs, and this is a blue spring. They put blue paint up here at the top. So that's the best one to use. Um, it'll be one of the controls for the experiment. And it, it feeds into a little plastic hole on the back here, and then it'll keep it. See, it won't move. It's stuck. Okay, so you put that on there all the way, and uh, this sits in here like this. It's got its own little slot, and you tighten this down like that. Makes it look like a boat. And right here you can put weight if you wanted to, but I don't like a lot of weight. I like to keep it as light as possible. Now this is your object, so you need to get the mass of this thing. So use a triple beam balance, and you know from chemistry, they say you make sure everything's all zeroed out, and then put this thing on there. You can measure the spring, the picket fence, and the cart, everything all together, okay? Then, you can put it on the track, and the track's got two feet. Now, these feet, have adjustable uh, screws so you can raise and lower the track. And you want to uh, raise and lower it so that when the cart is moving down the track, it stays at constant speed. So I've been messing around with that, and that is pretty dang good. So you see it's a little bit, got a little bit of uh, friction there. So you can go ahead and, I, I, was, I was doing this side over here. So just screw that down a little bit, screw it down just a little bit more, and let's see what we got. Ooh, that's looking really good, really good. Okay, so now there's no forces, we faked it, there's no forces acting on the cart, because the cart, once in motion, stays in motion. All right. The only force is gonna occur down here at the end, this spring right here is gonna do work on the cart by stretching it. But the first thing we need to do is measure the spring constant. And that was the third item I told you. You had to do three, like three experiments. Now, you only need to add a certain amount to the spring and measure the stretch. And you're all done measuring the spring constant of the spring. Remember, you did the spring constant measurement as a simulation in experiment one. So I have a weight pan here and I put 305 grams, that's a lot of weight. So I bring this thing down, and this is called an end stop right here. This thing's an end stop, and you can see this piece of plastic right here fits right through. In fact, it'll bring the string, I tied a string on the end, there's a little hole on the end of the plunger right there, and I put the string on there, and then I got a pulley here, and I'm gonna put the weight on the string. Got it. And then I'm gonna pull it until it doesn't stretch. Okay, so it's all the way here and it hasn't stretched at all. And I measure where the card is. So I see it at 16.3 centimeters. Okay, 16.3 centimeters, however you want to make the measurement, works fine. So now I'm going to put the weight on there, like that. 
and I am measuring f like 14.0 centimeters. Okay, and so then you take the difference and divide it into the weight. So remember that was 305 grams, which is 0 0.305 kilograms. Gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And it's all divided by delta X. And delta X was, remember it was 14.0. Uh, we'll put that on the end because the numbers are getting less rather than greater, 14.0. And then when I took it off, it was sitting at 16.3, 16.3. Okay, now if you move the decimal point, you can get it in meters like that. And then this will give you K, the spring constant. That's delta F over delta X. And we're using weight as the enforcer, okay? And uh, this, this pulley, you can adjust the pulley. You want to adjust the pulley so it's pretty nice and square. I think that might be a little bit better. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, see, it went a little bit more. 13.6. So this is, this was 13.6. Okay? So make sure when you adjust this thing that the string goes rectangular, uh, like a 90 degree angle, like that. Okay. Perfect. And that's it. That's, that's a really quick part of the experiment, but you really need to know what the spring constant is for the spring. So you can dismantle that, and uh, there's usually uh, scissors around in the lab. You can just uh, take that right off of there. Okay, good. Now, we've got a little pin here. All right, and the pin is gonna go through the little hole in the plunger. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna put a, a second stop, second stop on the track. So we're gonna move this guy right here, and we're gonna put another one right, right, okay. All right, good. Okay, good. Now this comes right over here. Uh, this string, we cut that off. Okay. Now, there's no stretch whatsoever right there. So I'm gonna bring this guy in a little bit. Uh, let's see, do I wanna move this guy? No, I'm gonna keep this guy fixed. I'm gonna keep this one fixed. Then I'm gonna bring this one in. And we'll see where it is. And you don't need the, the pulley anymore. Okay, let me go a little bit more. Okay, it's gotta go, okay. So right there, I'm gonna put it, and we'll get our smallest distance. Okay, so it's almost, they're almost touching each other. Now you go ahead, now right now it says 17.5. So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna put this pin right in the little hole. All right, 17.5. Now it's at 16.7. Uh, so it's about 0.8 centimeter stretch of the spring. Now I take the photo gate and I put it down here right where, um, right where it'll block the beam after the spring has pushed it after the spring has pushed it. Now we need to set up the photo gate. So we go over here to, um, to the setup, and it's just like before, but only we're gonna just use one flag, one photo gate, one flag, remember we plugged it in uh, number one, and we got photo gate, and then we go over here to timer, and we go, we want prefigure pre timer, so we take that, okay, then we go down, one photo gate, go next, and what time of timer do we want? Well, we want, oop, we want one photo gate, single flag, all right, and we just want the, uh, we can get the speed. So we get rid of the time in the gate, just leave the speed, go next, and then the distance is 0 0.025. 0 0.0250, 0.0250 meters. So it'll give us in meters per second. 
All right, if you want it in centimeters, it's 2.5. So here, let's do it in centimeters because it's not going to be very fast. All right, let's get rid of those zeros over there. Okay, good. And uh, so then we're going to go next and we're going to finish it. All right, good. And uh, save it. Okay, it's all saved. All right, and then we only want the speed, so it's just a single number, pick digits. All right, and then you go up here and you pick speed. Okay, pretty easy. Oh, it says centimeters. Let's see if we can change the units. You see centimeters right there? They are right there. Okay, so it'll be in centimeters per second. All right, you ready to go? Okay, I believe we're all ready to go. So you just barely put this little metal thing into the hole. You measure how much stretch of the spring, and then you just let it go. So we did work on the spring, and now the spring is going to do work on the cart, and that'll be a net force, and that'll cause a change in kinetic energy. All right, so here we go. And I didn't, oh, I didn't push collect. Hang on one second. Uh, operator error, operator error. All right. Okay. Now we're going to get one when we bring it in. Okay. Hey, I didn't see anything. What happened? I'm not getting anything. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, I don't want to stop this. Okay, hang on. All right. So it's a uh, stop. Okay, start. Photogate timer. All right, should get it. All right, let's see. Let me see. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, right, right, right. We need to make sure we're scanning in the right spot. That's what it is. Uh, hang on one second. See? Okay, good. We're all set. Again. That's sometimes why the lab takes so long. Okay, you ready? Let's go ahead and get a number. So here we go. Just pull it. It says 0 .927 centimeters per second. That's pretty dang fast. That doesn't make sense. Um, all right. So anyway, let me just do it again. Okay, uh, you can see you get different numbers there. Um, that's what we call random error. Okay, notice I haven't changed the distance at all. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and stretch it some more. Now, here's how you do that. Okay, remember, this is, this is zero right there, all right? Now, you take this guy, and remember, this is... Uh, this is, this is uh, like right here, this position right here. I don't know what this position is. So this position is like 4.5. That's 17. So you can move this in. All right. And measure that distance that you're stretching it. And then pin it again. Now, we're clearly uh, outside. We can move this forward a little bit. And let's go ahead and get another number. Okay, so four, three, seven, eight. Let's see how consistent it is. Five, one, one, one. Let's try another one. Four, three, seven, six. Well, that was almost the same as the very first one. Okay, so you got to uh, stretch the spring. And you do it by moving this stop right here. You may want to get a ruler uh, to keep track of how much you're, uh, you're, you're uh, stretching it. It would be a lot easier if you just took a ruler right across here. Because remember, in the very beginning, when we stretched it the first time, we could associate that distance with that stretch. I forget what it was. It was like 0.8 centimeters. And then as you move this thing more and more, you just measure that distance there. And that will give you the stretch. And in fact, there's two lines right here, real easy with a meter stick to measure that distance right there. So hopefully that makes good sense. So anyway, you're going to make eight of those measurements, small, medium, and large. So the, the, the biggest measurement you can make is this thing completely compressed. And that looks pretty good right there. 
Oop, I'm going to go a little bit further. Okay, good. And uh, let me put the little piece of metal in there. Okay, good. Got it. Okay, so anyway, you just measure that distance there. It'll be related to the stretch. Okay, ready to go? Whoa! 12,987.69. Couldn't catch it fast enough. All right, so that's the, that is the, the kinetic energy version of the experiment. Now, the next experiment that you can do, we gotta watch our time in the class. In fact, we might have to, might have to do something radical, uh, like we could take this box here. We'll have to see uh, what we're gonna do about that, because I'm not sure how much time we have. But if you tilt the track, a little bit, put your masses under there, and get your video camera out, you're gonna video, uh, you're gonna take your video and find out how high the cart goes up the track. So let's go back and you're done with the photo gate. So you can take, actually, you can leave that guy in because he's part of your mass. All right, so we'll go in here, compress him. Uh, let me go about half the way this time. All right, and pin him, oops. All right, so right now this guy is sitting like at 16.7 centimeters. You take your video camera, now let me go ahead and let him go. Whoa, it's a little bit too much, and so it actually needs to be up a little bit more. I actually brought a ring stand, uh, so you can, you can put a ring stand on a clamp and clamp it up so you can do the experiment uh, using a ring stand. Uh, we also have some cards, we can make it a little bit steeper, but if you just made that thing a little bit steeper um, somehow, you can prob we'll probably just have to go to the ring stand uh, to do that. But you're going to videotape how far it goes up the track. Now I made the measurement in the back over here, so when it goes up the track and then stops, you want to get the measurement right there. Now. You gotta get your camera right where you can get those numbers. So you might not know where it's gonna be going. You got a general idea, but if you do it twice, once just to pretty much see where it's gonna go, and then the other one, you get your camera in place and then photograph it. Now, re now you also have to measure the stretch again. And again, the, the best way to measure the stretch is by measuring the distance on these two lines on the two stops to get the distance there. And you're gonna relate that to gravitational potential energy because this th the spring's gonna do work on it and that work is going to push it up the track until it all converts into gravitational potential energy and then it'll stop. Okay, so we actually wanna get both experiments in. They're so important in your study of motion to see potential energy and kinetic energy, and then to see how closely they agree with the amount of work that the spring is doing. Okay, so with that, that ends experiment number seven. And I hope you enjoyed that. And you'll definitely enjoy it in the lab. But you'll probably have like me saying, come on, we gotta go faster, we gotta get, get this done, we gotta get this done, we wanna get both of them done. All right, so we're gonna do our very best to get both those experiments in so you get the full, the full experience. All right, so on that note, uh, peace be with you, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.